Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, thanks so much for listening today. Uh, you probably know this if you listen to podcasts, but your willingness to rate and review what you've just heard is a huge blessing to our ministry. Uh, really, without that, it's almost impossible for people to find us and be blessed by us. So would you take just a second to rate and review this podcast? Thank you so much. How many people would it take to give you the help that you need? There are some of us who don't really like or maybe even want any help. We, we're, we're good. That's not true for everybody. If you were struggling with anything, how many people would it take? What is the number? Throughout this series, we've talked about anxiety, the darkness of depression, and even evil thoughts. We've talked about doubt and skepticism, fear and worry. We've even talked about having a wrong identity and finding purpose and meaning in life. And there are a whole host of other things that we could be struggling with. Physical ailments. It could be relationships that are on the rocks. Whatever it is, dealing with mistakes that we've made that are massive, whatever it is, how many people would it take? Pick a number. People who were there, who showed up, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally showed up for you. What would be the number? How many people would it take to give you the help that you needed? I talked with somebody recently, a friend of mine in our church, and he said, I could go for just two, just two people to give me the help that I need at work, to understand what's broken about the systems, and at least to be there to encourage. So when we're dealing with challenges, which everyone does, at least we could be there together. And I didn't feel alone. I talked with a lady in my church a long time ago, but I vividly remember her telling me, I could go for one person in my life who would never let me down. Just one person. Because whether it was her parents, her siblings, her spouse, or her children, it was one disappointment after the next. And she could just go for one. But notice I said, how many? There's no limit. What would that be for you? Well, I'd like to introduce to you a bunch of people. And we have no idea what their names are. No idea at all. But they're in the Bible and they're specifically mentioned, and I'm convinced they're mentioned in order to give us this broader encouragement because they, like us, need the benefits of the resurrection too. In fact, that's exactly what the Bible tells us. When Jesus died and rose from the grave, Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that he appeared to Peter and to the twelve and also to 500 others. 500 others. Now, why does the Bible tell us that? Well, first and foremost, Jesus appeared to 500 others at a time when a lot of people weren't convinced that Jesus was legit. And then all of a sudden, what do you see throughout the known world at that time in the Mediterranean region? People that didn't believe, but then suddenly believed that Jesus died and rose. Well, what would account for that change? People who would even be willing to be persecuted and never renounce their faith. They would even rather die than deny Jesus. What could account for such an effect in their life? Well, the fact that Jesus most certainly appeared to them. And not just to a select few, to 500 others. 500 other people, just like that man I mentioned, just like that lady I mentioned, just like me and just like you who, who need other people to bring to us the benefits of the resurrection. Think about it this way. Sociologists will tell us that we cannot have an innumerable amount of friendships. We have a capacity. In fact, the most socially gifted among us, I think the last time I read about this, it was about 190 friendships we could have. People that we can kind of keep tabs on. As an illustration, there are hundreds of people in my church, but I can't be that point person for all of them. In fact, when pastors think that, it's, it's very unhealthy. You just can't. We're not socially made to have, let's say, 500 close relationships. We just can't do that. But now take that coin and flip it upside down. Imagine if there were 500 people in your life who, although you couldn't be that point person for all of them, they were ready to be there for you. So they can only, let's say, have 150 people that are their close friends. But for all of fi those 500, they come to you to encourage you. Now, I know the numbers don't work out perfectly, 
But I bring that up because I'm convinced that's why God told us, at least partly, why there were 500 others. Not just to kind of double down on the proof that Jesus most certainly rose and appeared to countless people whose lives and even beliefs were changed, but so that we would have this benefit of knowing that there is this great crowd around us of people who are meant to be part of that, well, we'll call it the 500. So go back to that question I asked you, how many people would it take? According to the scriptures, let's say there maybe isn't 500 other people, but there are certainly other people that God has put in your life. People who also share this hope that you have, that you're forgiven, that the resurrected Jesus comes to bring light even in those darkest moments and those most gloomy days. That there are people that God has put in your life to speak truth, His truth to you in a world filled with confusion. That God raising His Son from the dead brings to you forgiveness and that is a fact for you right here and now. That is something that people are meant to proclaim to one another. By virtue of Jesus rising from the dead, even in the face of your biggest mistakes, you are forgiven. 500 others. I don't know who that might be in your life, but what I do know is that the flip side of that coin is that you are also meant to be that for other people too. And since Jesus most certainly rose from the grave, he has wonderful, eternal blessings in store for you and for so many more. But those blessings aren't just to be realized in the future, although they will be. They are for us right here and now, for us to share with the people around us. So maybe for you, there is that person who lies in the dark, who rests in hopelessness and despair. And maybe you get to be one of those 500 others for them.